But they can't. So go give me that real quick, um, that Christianity 101. About 2,000 years ago, in a far-flung province in the Middle East, a man emerged from the desert with a message. I don't know who that is, boss. I don't know who that man is. The devil. Ain't no white man looking like that living in no damn desert. Go back, bro. Go back. Ain't no white man looking like that in no damn desert, man. I'm sorry. No, sir. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. We got kids watching. Go ahead. Emerged from the desert with a message. One that would radically alter the course of world events and come to define the lives of billions. Idol. Christianity is a monotheistic religion that centers on the teachings of Jesus Christ, believed to be the son of an almighty universal God. It is through faith in Jesus Christ and his teachings that believers have access to God and the afterlife. The Christian religion began about 2,000 years ago in the province of Judea in the Middle East. It was a sect of the overarching religion at the time, Judaism, and originally had very few followers. What's known about Christianity's earliest days in the life of Jesus Christ comes from four books called the Gospels. Oh God. The Gospels hold that Jesus was born in the first decade BC in the region of Judea. His father was named Joseph. I'm sorry, pause it. And his this, so they just so they just say, okay, they're gonna be white. We don't care about historically it being accurate. We don't care that Israel is Northeast Africa. We don't care about none of that. We don't care about it being historically accurate. We just gonna make sure he looked like this. And yeah, he went in here amongst Egyptians and he looked just like, come on, man. I'm 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 low-key not even want to watch the rest of this. Everybody pissed me off, man. Go ahead, play it. <laughs> His mother was named Mary. According to tradition, Jesus was immaculately conceived by God. In some accounts, Jesus had been trained as a carpenter or a builder. But by the age of 30, like he took preaching, saying that forgiveness of past sins was the key to achieving righteousness. However, the Jewish religious leaders and Roman rulers of the region declared Jesus an agitator. They had him arrested and crucified, nailed to a wooden cross, and left to die. So I'll go back, go back, go back. I saw some. So you the devil the Bible speak of, you so-called white man boy. The devil! Play it. Nailed to a wooden Pause it. You see that black demon over there? You see that black mm. demon with dreads? Long braided hair? Or snakes, whatever that is on his head, like Medusa. Like what it called, Medusa? Uh -huh. These folk devils, man. So <laughs> the real devil they got on the cross. Damn. You understand? Then they got a black demon, look like uh, what they call it? Um, what they call it? The uh, uh, minotaur or something. Yeah, it's another one that they got. That uh, it slipped my mind. It's dirt and, and like Holland and stuff like Krampus. that. They the Krampus, the Krampus. Mm. Yeah, see, I'll pray. That's why I need you. That's why I need my brother by my side. I'll pray. The Krampus. So they saying that the Krampus is black and he looked like that, but the real Jesus is white. But they just saying it's just, you know, we just supposed to just accept this. Go ahead. Cross and left to die. But the story of Jesus doesn't end with his death. According to the Gospels, the body of Jesus was resurrected by God, his father. If Jesus had oh, built man. the foundations of the Christian faith, it was a Greek speaking Jew named Paul who made it a religion. Oh, According God. to Paul, God revealed Jesus Christ to him in a vision. Paul then converted to Christianity and made it his mission to see Christ's teachings as an institution by establishing churches across the Roman Empire. Paul's actions catapulted Christians from an esoteric Jewish sect to a society of worshipers with reach across the known world. Over the next two millennia, Christianity would go through an unprecedented journey. 
Scriptures, such as the Gospels, would be gathered and translated to form Christianity's sacred text, the Bible. The Christian faith would branch into many denominations and be practiced by followers on all seven continents. And the number of Jesus Christ's followers would grow to two billion, making Christianity the pause, world's largest. Pause, 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 pause. See, it's that Jewish 0.2%. That's the devil. Oh, yeah, there it is at the top. Do you Bam. see that? And at the bottom down there, 0.1%. I know what you're trying to say. Look. I know you're trying to say. They showing you who run the world. That's the elites that run the world right there. That's 0 0.01%. That's 0 .1%. Mm. Yep, we see right through you. Look at the pie graph, though. The number one religion is Christians. And then right up under that is Muslims. Can we get a scripture on that, Cap? Yes, yes, yes. Deuteronomy 28. Real quick, the just before we leave it, just so you can see. And Paul ain't white neither. I just, that made me mad when they showed him. <laughs> they got Paul, the mighty man from the tribe of Benjamin. Black man right. looking like doggone Marilyn Manson. Damn. What the hell is this? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 64. Read it up. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people. So this is a prophecy to the Israelites. The Lord said he was going to scatter the Israelites among all people. Read. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Uh-huh. What was going to be going down? And there... Thou shalt serve other gods. When the Israelites got to these various places scattered throughout the four corners, corners of the earth, they were going to serve other gods. Not the God of the Bible, but other gods. Let's see which ones. Which would be the most worshipped gods? Number one and number two. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Can you put the graph back up, the pie graph? Even wood... Christian, because of that wooden rosary, that cross that they say they hung that white man on, and then, and stone, the Muslims with the cobblestone, that rock that they worship. You don't understand how heavy you is into, in, into idolatry until you read the scripture, until you read the Bible and really see what's going on. And the white man, all he do is just put it, he put it in a, a nice little graph, he put music behind it, and you watch it on TV, you've probably seen this. I know it's folks watching that seen this, and they never know what it was talking about. Mm -hmm. This is it right here. Yep. All biblical. Great, great scripture. Great scripture. Uh, let's, let's finish the video. Largest religion. While religious practice, ritual, and tradition have changed according to the spiritual needs and desires of its billions of adherents pause worldwide. It, pause it. Pause it. Pause it. Pause it. You hear what it said? It said religion has changed based off the spiritual needs of its followers. So if you're a homosexual, religion can now be formed to fit you. you, are, you if you like uh, stealing, you can find a religion because like, these pastors, they're stealing. You can find a religion that fits you. If you want to lie, you can find a religion that fits you. That's what it's saying. Read you know, it, I, it. I, I walked past somebody's car today. You know, they got such thing called a woman's Bible. Huh? I seen a rainbow Bible one time. Rainbow? Oh, gay, what? Bible, gay Bible Dang. one time. Dog. Go ahead. According to the spiritual needs and desires of its billions of adherents worldwide, a man from Judea's simple message of peace and forgiveness remains just as powerful now as it did 2,000 years ago. Stop. Now give me uh, Matthew 24 and 5. 24 and 4. Because <clears throat> um, all, all those idols that it was showing, all those different imageries it was showing, they're not biblical. They don't line up with the Bible, y'all. None of those uh, figures were white. None of them. All of them were black. We're going to show you that. Read. The book of Matthew, chapter 24, and verse 4. Read and out. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. It said, many going to come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Go to Revelation 1.14. What does it mean, many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, I'm Jesus, my message? Hmm. Because they left out the fact that many of the Spaniards and the Portuguese forced the Jews and the Moors that was living amongst them to either worship their understanding of Christianity or their new religion of Christianity or be reduced to slavery. They didn't mention that. They never mentioned that. They jumped from the time of Paul into modern-day Christianity. They leave out the, the, what happened in the middle when Israelites, or the world in particular, were forced Forced to serve that image. They don't ever point that out. Revelation 1, 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 14. Go ahead. His head and his hairs were white like wool. His head and his hairs were white like wool. 
as white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Jesus Christ had white woolly hair, right? He had an afro, or, or what we know as a Negro hair today, right? Go ahead. And his feet like a to fine brass. And his feet was like fine brass, come on. As if they burned in a furnace. And his feet was like fine brass as if they burned in a furnace. Jesus Christ was a black man. So was his mother. Uh, his father, his mother was a black woman. His father was a black man. So was King David, King Solomon, his ancestors. That's so was right. Abraham, so was Isaac, so was Jacob, so was Adam. Yes, All sir. black men. You understand that? So these, these images that they're showing you, they're false. Not only are their images false, they left out the fact that in the Bible it prophesies that a due image of Jesus was going to come and those that did not worship it, they will be killed. We read that earlier in Revelation 13. Now, I, I put a book up there. It's called The Jews and Moors, The Jews and Moors of Spain, I believe. If I am mistaken. The Jews and Moors of Spain. The Jews and Moors in Spain. You see that picture, that book? And it came with two pages with it. I want to read something out of it. Read that scripture again. No, go from there. Read, um, read um, Revelation. No, First John four and two. First John four one through two. The book of First John chapter four and verse one. Read it out. Beloved, believe not every spirit. Don't believe every spirit. But try the spirits whether they are of God. Try the spirits whether they are of God. Come on. Because many false prophets are going out into the world. Because there are many false prophets in the world. You saw all those Christian denominations. You saw it, and it said that basically Christianity had to evolve to fit the followers of it now, to, to evolve their many needs and spiritual needs and what they want to do and what they like to do and what they, who they want to love and who they want to be in a relationship with. Let's make the Bible or the Christianity as a religion conform to that so we can make more money. That's what it's about, making more money. You can't tell people they can't be homosexual because we're going to lose money. We can't tell people they got to wear fringes. Or we can't tell people that the Bible is only for the blacks, Hispanic, and Native Indians and those that were scattered throughout the diaspora. Then we'll lose all the white folk money and the Chinese and the Arabs. Damn. All right, let's pull that book up. The Jews and Moors in Spain, Rabbi Joseph Kroskov. Zoom in on that. Nearly 150,000 souls made their way by land to Portugal, whose king, John II, dispensed with his scruples of conscience so far as to allow his greed to triumph over his creed. He granted them a passage through his dominion on their way to Africa and the permission of an eight-month stay in his realm in consideration of a tax of $8 a head, which immense sum he levied from the native Portuguese Jews. You hear this? The native Portuguese Jews. He made these folks because they, was, they was, were in exile. So he said, okay, y'all can come through my dominion, but I'm going to need, if you're gonna, you can stay here eight months, but I'm going to need that tax money. Let me get $8 a head. Go ahead. Ferdinand and Isabella threatened, and Torquemada... Oh, Torquemada, yep incited the Portuguese clergy, but John II had over, a mil had over a million of dollars to quicken his conscience and to wage war if necessary. And expecting it, he instantly put such of the Jewish exiles who were manufacturers of arms and miners to work. So while we was there, he had us working, right, to prepare for this war. Watch this, come on. But his clemency was of short duration. It soon gave way to the most frightful era of the exile's suffering. When the news reached the homeless exiles of the atrocious crimes inflicted upon their brethren on their way to the African coast by inhuman captains and heartless crews. So when, it was on, when we was on these boats, they was doing some inhumane things to us, right? These captains and these heartless crews. Go ahead. Seeing nothing but cruel death before them, whether going or whether remaining, they preferred meeting death in Portugal to ex to exposing themselves to the inhumanity and beastly lusts and tortures of barbarous pirate sailors and African savages. Those are the other nations. Edomite, Edomite um, pri uh, barbarous pirate sailors and African savages. Go ahead. And listlessly awaiting death 
and praying for it. We were praying for them. Go ahead. They remained after the time purchased for their stay had passed away. To their misfortune, the plague broke out in Portugal and raged with death fear, deathly fury. Immediately, the church arose, held the Jews responsible for the visitation of the plague. So the eat <laughs> damn devil, man. So they said them black Jews is the reason that these plagues is lashing out. That this is the reason that the plagues are coming to our area in Portugal. They blame the black Jews. Go ahead. And lashed the populace into a relentless fury because of the visitation of the plague and the breach of contract on the part of the Jews. Because we had to stay for longer than eight months. Go ahead. Scroll up. Scroll up. I'll zoom out. Yep. Because the king's creed awoke again simultaneously with the reawakening of his greed. He issued an edict, which edict, edict which threw even that of Torquemada into the shade. Uh -huh. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms, dragged into the church. Dragged into where? Into the church. Go ahead, zoom into the top. Baptized. They was dragged into the church, forced to be baptized. Those under three years of age were given to Christians to receive a Christian education. Or in other words, to be raised as slaves. Wait a minute. So why they leave this out in that video we just watched about how it's scattered amongst the world and it's the main world known religion and it's for all races and all people and all this and all that. Why they always leave this out? Why did they talk about the Spanish Inquisition? Why did they say, show us how uh, King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella issued what, the, what they call the Doctrine of Discovery? Basically, where the, the conquistadors came over here, and there were Jewish Amalekite Edomites amongst them. Why do they never point this out? Why do they always keep this under wraps when they talk about Christianity? We ain't never heard this history. We ain't hear this history until the bishop and deacon start bringing it out. Right. They were forcing us to be slaves. They don't never talk about that. Go ahead. Those between three and ten. Put it down. Those between three and ten years of age were put on on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas called Ijas Perdidas, the Isle of Perdition. The Isle of what? Perdition. Who, will, hey, who sent Damn. them to the Isle of Perdition? The son of perdition. That's right. The man of sin. Go ahead. Which was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals Damn. to fare there as best they could. So we just on an island with condemned criminals. Damn. We just out there just trying to live. You know, they trying to rape, rape our women, rape our children, right. throw us over in the water, kill us. Go ahead. Those between 10 and 14 years were sold as slaves. Mm. Then, indeed, the cup of their affliction was full to the brim. It was the stern truth which Lenau uttered when he said, Thy, thy, thy curtsy, curtsy wife's D. You ain't got to read that. Yeah. Read the next part. The <laughs> Jews have experienced fully the unequal skill of the church in administering pain. Wait a minute. The church did what to the Israelites? In administering, administering pain. Administered pain to the Israelites. That's what they did. Go back to Revelation 13 and read verse 15. The Bible's true, but they're going against it. But guess what? Religion sells, and they make their money off ignorant, dumb black folks that hate the Bible. Go Re ahead. Revelation 13, verse 15. Read that he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Anybody that wouldn't worship that, any of the Israelites that wouldn't worship that, they would be killed or thrown into slavery. Now, how, why, is, why does it say that they gave life to the image of the beast? We just saw on, on that little three, four minute clip of Christianity 101 by the National Geographic, there was not one black image in the whole thing. The only black image we saw was the image of a demon. Everybody else was white. All the Israelites, all the Jews, all the followers of Christ, Paul, Mark, John, James, everybody was white. Jesus. Lies, blasphemy, lies. But they never point this part out right here. Go back to the book. Mothers cast themselves at the feet of the tyrants and pitifully beg to be taken with their babes. 
they were heartlessly thrust aside. Give me, hey, give, hey, give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 32. What the hell you mean? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 32. Bring it up. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh -huh. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Go back to what we just read. Let's see if that goes with this scripture. Go back to what we just read. Mothers cast themselves at the feet of the tyrants and pitifully beg to be taken with their babes. They were heartlessly thrust aside. Read. Hundreds of mothers, mad with despair. When they say mad, it ain't talking about angry. It's talking about they went crazy because their kids were being taken from them. Go ran, ahead. Ran behind the ships as they carried off the idols of their heart and perished in the waves. It said the mothers died in the waves. I want you to read that again. I want you to read that Deuteronomy 28 again. Deuteronomy 28 and 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. And there shall be no might in thy hand. They took our sons and daughters, and the mothers were trying to run after them on the ships and die in the waves. Because they didn't think it was no point in me living. You taking my baby from me that I'm here for 10 months or 9 months. Read verse 34. Verse 34. So shalt thou be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. What that mean? Gonna cause um, uh, mental disorders, mental instability. So you'll run into some waves and kill yourself because they're taking your children. That's Bible. That's history. That's fact. But they didn't point that out in that little, the little three minute clip they gave you. They didn't tell them how, they, how we became Christians on this side of the world, how it became the number one religion. They ain't tell you that. Forced upon our people. Hello, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Life. Hey, don't worry about that article. Pull up the video of me of Creflo Dollar. About the $65 million jet. Religion sales. They make money off of this. We neglected our Frankenstein today. Go ahead, play that. The finances of a church led by a popular televangelist are under close scrutiny this morning. It comes as Pastor Creflo Dollar asks his followers to buy him a $65 million private jet. Mark Strassman is outside the World Changers Church in International in College Park, Georgia. Mark, good morning. Good morning. This church behind me is like uh, any house of worship. It is nonprofit and tax exempt, but it is also highly controversial, most recently when the pastor asked the faithful to help him travel the world in style. Dream for the best house. Dream for the best car. He's a pastor named Dollar who preaches the prosperity gospel. The more you give, the more you shall receive. Just because the world don't have it don't mean you can't have it. Creflo Dollar's sermons pack his 8,500-seat megachurch. His ministry has prospered with satellite churches in at least a dozen states and hundreds of thousands of online followers. I am the resurrection. Dollar owns this multi-million dollar mansion and condo. In March, his website asked the faithful to help him buy something else. To give contributions of 300 U.S. dollars or more. A $65 million Gulfstream G650 jet, the top of the line in luxury air travel. One church member, Mary Jones, plans on answering the pastor's call, even though she rides the bus 20 miles every Sunday to Dollar's Church. Listen to what she's saying. We support our pastor. That's what we're here for. The work that he do and where the Lord have him traveling, uh, he doesn't need a cheap airplane. He needs the best. Pause. But Dollar later took that. Pause it. That's just to deceive. She ride the bus 20 miles to his church every Sunday and give him her money. So the money that she could be using for a down payment for a car or to right. buy her a little hootie to get, by, get around. Mm. She gives that same money to his ministry. And he allows that. Now, when did Christ allow that? When did Christ ever teach us to live off the people? Can you give me that in Matthew 23, what Christ said? He was a servant. Man, I tell you, man, these pastors about filthy lucre. Unjust gain. Read 23 and 11. Matthew chapter 23 and verse 11. But he that is greatest among you 
shall be your servants. The man that is greatest among you is supposed to be your servant, not live off of you. All the prophets got jobs. Unless they're older men and they got, uh, what's that? Uh, retirement. retirement. Mm -hmm. Some brothers got disability, and it's enough to pay their bills and pay their arms. So we can't say, man, I know your back bad, but go and get you a job. No, we can't do that. He got some financial gain. He's able to, 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 to live off of that. Creflo would do that. Right, yeah, yeah. Creflo would do it. You, you know you need to get up and go work. You ain't paid your 10%. You ain't paid your money. <laughs> Philippians 2 and 8. These pastors, don't, these pastors don't exemplify anything in the Bible, nothing whatsoever. The only thing they exemplify in the Bible is the fault, is the examples of what not to be. None of the biblical, um, give me verse 7 in that. None of the bi biblical characteristics of Christ and the apostles and the, and the prophets, they don't exemplify any of that. They exemplify the false prophets. Go ahead. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7. Come on. He made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Go ahead. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. What did Christ do? He humbled himself. Christ humbled himself, read. And became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Go ahead. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him. See, they want pleasure on earth. But the Bible says when you do what you're supposed to do on earth and you're a leader to the people, you're an example to the people, you humble yourself and you're obedient unto death, the Lord exalts your name in due time. Your name be exalted when you get the kingdom. It ain't about living great on this earth right now. Our people poor, man. A lot of people in his church is poor. That's just the poor. But he going to sit and take advantage of it. Modern day pastors, all of them, exact same, all of them. None of them don't want to hear no, my daddy ain't never do that. He'll pass you a lie. Your daddy took tithes. Go ahead. And giving him a name which is above every name. And he, gonna get, and he gave Christ a name that's above every name. The scripture said we're supposed to be joint heirs with Christ. Right? Go from there. Go to Michael 3 and 11. Lying pastors. Stealing and robbing the people. The book of Micah, chapter 3 and verse 11. Bring it the up. heads thereof judge for reward. So they only judge for reward. They only counsel you for reward. Well, why don't you and your husband come and counsel? It's going to be about $25 an hour, $3, $300 an hour. You know, I'm a, I'm a busy man. I travel all over the world. Matter of fact, just give me a cool thousand. I'll counsel y'all for a, a day. You get $1,000 just to talk to you about lies, just lie to you about a day. Yeah, you know, let him rule over, let her rule over you, brother. No scriptures. Go ahead. And the priest thereof teach for hire. They only teach for hire. They get hired. Like, like for instance, Creflo Dollar, he wants that expensive plane so he can fly to these other countries and spread his rhetoric and get paid to do it. Go ahead. And the prophets thereof divine for money. The prophets thereof divine for money. Yet will they lean upon the Lord and say, is not the Lord among us? God got to be with us. God want us to have this. Go ahead. None evil can come upon us. It ain't no evil going to come upon us because God is with us. Play that next one. I mean, play the, uh, the rest of that video. On the video after the jet request was criticized. Former member Shamora Barnard was disgusted. What's Pastor Dollar's prosperity gospel really all about? What is it all about? It's about feeding him. It's about him eating. Pause it. I'm going to... She right. It's about feeding him. But look what he done led her to. She in Egyptology now. You know the most high going to judge him for that. He wounded her conscience about the scriptures. She don't want to hear the Bible now. I can see it in her ear. Go ahead. Go ahead. Tell you whatever I need to tell you to get you to put money in my pocket. This isn't the first time Dollar's Church has been under scrutiny. In 2007, the U.S. Senate Finance Committee investigated Dollar and five other televangelists for possible tax abuse. Investigators labeled Dollar as the least cooperative. But in 2011, the Senate abandoned its investigation, critics claimed, under pressure from church groups. We wanted to talk to Pastor Dollar. He declined our request for an interview. But a representative for the church sent us a statement which read in part, quote, all of the ministry's revenues go to charity and or ministry with the exception of the salaries and benefits for some 400 employees ministry-wide. Ain't no way. Dollar also responded to his critics during a sermon. If I want to believe God for a $65 million plane, you cannot stop me. You cannot stop me from dreaming. In Creflo's church, there is no accountability to anyone. He runs it as a fiefdom. Oli Anthony is president of the Trinity Foundation hey, now, in Texas. Pause. When a thief of the earth call you a thief, it's real. 
I'm trying Yo, to figure out. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Nah, I was just trying. I'm trying to figure out. Black folk don't. You know, black folk don't trust much of nothing. Much of nothing, right? But you'll trust a Negro who last name Dollar. Dang. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can't see he a hustler. Y'all are fools. And he changed his name. That ain't his real name. Right. He changed his name to Creflo Dollar. That's his preaching name. Exactly. So the white man calling, who is a thief, by the way, is calling this man a thief. Damn. Pot calling the kettle black. Go ahead. A church fundraising watchdog group. Chairman of the board of Texas Instruments or AT&T, they can have a fleet of jets, but they don't, they're not begging for money from people and get a tax write-off in order for them to establish such a lifestyle. A church spokesman says the annual budget here is around $80 million. Hey. Despite lowering the online fundraising site, the pastor reportedly plans to keep trying to raise donations to buy a new plane. Oh. What? Gail? Hey, Cap. You know, God Esau, is not going to hold you guilty for that? You know, Esau ain't mad because he doing this to the people. He mad because he ain't getting no cut. Right. <laughs> That's it. That nigga need to right. cut me Damn. Damn. The hell it is. Tax evasion. You niggas making money like that. <laughs> hey, so $80 million, right, to be spread amongst himself and 400 employees. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way, boy. <laughs> ain't no way, boy. Hey, they, getting, they getting paid by the hour. <laughs> Like yeah, yeah, for real. $20, Twenty dollars an hour. Right, man. He, <laughs> bro, he got janitors in there. You know they ain't making none of that eighty million. Right. Come on, man. Five hours. He made he making a bulk of that mil that eighty million, bro. He making at least uh, forty to fifty of that eighty million at least. And, and if he is spreading the rest of it upon, amongst his employees, his wife is one of his employees. I'm sure he gave his sons and daughters a job. Bring it out. Didn't he whoop his daughter ass for um, uh, fornicating? She was sleeping with some dude. He beat the brakes off of her. <laughs> That's he tax, did. That's he went to jail. Tax free. <laughs> that's tax free money right there. For real, it's tax free. Like you said, tax free, man. Robbing hey, cause, the people. Because the government's supposed to take half of that. Uncle Sam getting it in. That's why Uncle Sam let him keep teaching. Just scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, IUIC, we deliver the truth.